Hi everyone, I'm Christy McCammon and I share tips, tools, and recipes to help you on your journey towards food freedom. Today I'm going to be talking about cravings. There are two sure ways to end a craving. Two entirely different approaches. One I used for years upon years, unsuccessfully, and one I've been using for a couple years and it's been very successful. So I'd like to give you a little bit of insight into those two approaches. The first way to get rid of a craving is to give into it and answer that call. That is not the right way. I'm not suggesting that. I just want to share why I did that for so long. I spent years upon years having cravings and fighting them and just literally white knuckling my day and gritting my teeth to get through just one day without eating off plan or one day without binging or overeating. And it would take literally white knuckling. And there would be times where I was so exhausted from fighting that craving that I needed it to end. So I would just give in to that craving. I would just eat whatever it was that was calling out to me. Some people call that the indulger, uh, the saboteur. I call it the enemy because I know that it is the enemy. It is definitely something that doesn't want me to live out God's plan for my life. It is something that wants me in bondage to food. So I would answer that and eat. That's not the right way. I can assure you that it is not a permanent way. And because I've experienced this, I will actually go as far to call it the cowardly way. And I did things the cowardly way for so long because I was afraid to feel the feelings. I thought things were gonna to be too big and too ugly to face without the food. I was wrong, they are big, they are ugly, but you can get through it. So I spent years fighting those battles and just laying down and, and losing the battle and giving into food, letting food be in charge, being a slave to food, because it felt easier than dealing with issues of my past or dealing with emotions that just felt way too big. So that was not the right way to do it, however, it does end the craving, and there are times that I just ate to end the craving because it was too hard to deal with. The second way to stop a craving is to fight it continually, regularly, consistently with a plan, and it becomes less and less and less, and then it's rarely a fight, maybe just a mini battle every now and then, but it no longer becomes a war. When I first started Brightline Eating two and a half years ago, I had the plan, I knew what I was to do. No sugar, no flour, three meals a day and measured portions. That was it. I had a lot more tools in the toolbox. Of course, praying, fighting temptation, um, quoting scripture, walking away, meditating, deep breaths, reaching out to people, um, posting in the online community. I had a lot of tools, of course, but the first, 30 to 60 days, I cried. And it was just so much, so much to handle because I was not fighting the cravings. I wasn't stopping the cravings. I simply was working through them. I couldn't just go around them anymore and I couldn't just lay down on the battlefield. I decided that it was time to be courageous and fight. It was the place in my life where I had nowhere else to turn and I had to fight through them. I literally cried a lot the first 30 to 60 days. And whenever a temptation came up or I saw someone eating something that I wanted, that I was a friend of or had been for years upon years, um, I just had to, had to work through those. And rather than stuffing the feelings, I felt them. And guess what they did? They rose up and came out through my eyes. And it was tears upon tears. And I remember thinking, gosh, this would be so much easier just to eat. But I knew, I absolutely knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that I knew my answer, I knew the answer, and I simply had to work through those feelings and cry and process. It was not easy to process. Um, odd things came up, weird things, things that I hadn't thought about in years because I had stuffed them so far down. So after that 30 to 60 days, it was lovely because I had worked through so many emotions that needed to be worked through and I was no longer stuffing feelings. So I had really started training my brain tremendously. And so I didn't have 
white knuckle days very often. Yes, there were moments, of course, but I had tools in my toolbox that I could easily grab and go and flee from that situation. And then the craving stops at that point. So working through them is very, very hard, but it has to be done in order to move on and live your life courageously without this food addiction and food obsession. I had come a long way and was doing really well. And then this coronavirus uh, hit and I was fine at first, no problems. I just kept on using my tools and, and being bright and not eating off plan and not being a slave to food, just being committed to my bright lines and very successfully felt really good about it. Then a couple weeks in and just some challenges with um, business and finances and um, quarantined with the, my you know family and my five kids and just thinking through summer plans. And yes, we were grateful for what we had. Yes, we were thankful. Yes, we came up with awesome things to do, but there was so many unknowns and uncertainties. And for me, confusion, I didn't understand, you know, shutting the whole country down. Are, is everybody getting sick? Is everybody really dying? You know, there was just so many questions that I couldn't, my brain couldn't file away logically. And I tend to be very logical. And so I was, um, just kind of struggling with processing all that information. And as you know, you look at the news and one day you hear something and the next day it's something entirely different. So it was a lot for my brain to process. And so I found myself some days white knuckling. I found myself again to a place where I'm gritting my teeth and white knuckling and just praying to get through the end of the day without eating off plan. One afternoon, I found myself in the pantry with a cookie in my mouth and I paused and I realized that the indulger, the enemy, the saboteur stepped in and said, this is all too big. Just have this craving, this treat, just have it and relax. That's exactly what the enemy wants. And the indulger wants to just step in and save the day, lose the battle and create a bigger war. And I knew that at that point I had to pull in some new tools because everything was just getting too big and too scary and just too unknown, really. Not necessarily even scary, just unknown and uncertainty. That next day, I immediately talked to my mastermind group. I told them about my big, scary feelings of uncertainty. I shared that, I wrote that in a group. Um, I talked to my buddy, talked to my husband, and I got it out in the open. I exposed those feelings. I shared them. I shined a light on them so I could see them and they were no longer hidden deep, no longer talking to me privately. So I could announce that I had a meeting with my family and I told my kids I'm having a hard time and I'm tempted to sneak food, but this is what's in the house. And I commit that I'm not going to do that. So I pulled in my reinforcements, my accountability, a whole nother layer that I don't always have to use, but I knew I had to do that because there was still gonna be uncertainty for quite a while. So I began to let myself cry again, let myself feel those big feelings again. I didn't have to do that for a while. It kind of felt like everything was uh, mostly under control. And so I let myself cry. I let myself have a day where I would be sad and frustrated and took the time to do that. And that helped me process my feelings and allow me to work through those cravings, through those voices, through those temptations. I could not go around them and I could not let them knock me over on the battlefield and lay down and take that. I had to keep up being courageous and fighting through them and continue through this battle. The more battles that we lose and when we give into those cravings, the war is bigger and bigger and bigger. And my, the battle for my mind and my body was so big between, I wanted so bad to not just lose weight, but to get this mental food addiction under control. That's what I wanted. The weight loss is secondary. And it was a battle between getting it under control and the battle between truly, truly feeling like a slave to food and complete bondage. So this was just another place to strengthen my reinforcements, strengthen my will, strengthen my courage and fight. My encouragement to you is if you are first starting Bright Line Eating, if you are resuming, if you are simply having a hard time working through something, I'm going to encourage you to cry as much as you can. 
Maybe that sounds weird, I don't know, but I do know from my own experience, working through those feelings, letting ourselves cry or be angry or be sad or be confused is very, very, very helpful in working through those. So cry as much as you can, sleep as much as you can. If you can go to bed earlier, get up um, a little later, whatever it is, if you can sneak a little nap in in the afternoon, pray as much as you can as well. Pull in those three tools, cry, sleep, and pray as much as you can during these hard times, during a, a first starting out, during resuming, whatever it is, those are three big things to help uh, win the war, to be on your way to winning the war and winning battle after battle after battle. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it and I hope you have a really great day.